in this video I want to tell something about some pages of my book and the reason is that someone that had bought my book uh, asked me uh, about the so-called relaxation oscillator or the blocking oscillator. It's in my book from page 66 and further and well my idea was let me make that circuit again to show how it works etc etc. Uh, at first I uh, dissected this uh, ferrite transformer out of a LED lamp. There was an earlier video about that uh, LED lamp uh, today on my YouTube channel. But anyway, this ferrite and I had to dissect it. And let's go to the next picture. Um, I took off the isolation material and a very good idea was to heat it up a little bit with an air heat gun so that I could take out the, these two shells and here is the, uh, the form on which the uh, winding in the LED lamp was made. So very usable materials inside such an old LED lamp etc. I found by the way that uh, the winding out of that original LED lamp was more or less shortcut. Uh, so I had to rewind the whole thing with new wires, new wire of approximately 0.2 millimeters. So bad, uh, bad wire inside that old transformer, don't use it. That's my advice. So now I use good wire and of course you see here the shells and the ferrite materials etc etc. So I had to rewind it and uh, this is only a demo video. <coughs> uh, I only want to tell something about that relaxation oscillator. Uh, 40 windings here <coughs> and here also 40 windings. Thin wire of course and very important mark the beginning of the winding and the end and here the beginning and here also the end. So <coughs> 40 windings here, 40 windings there and on the secondary I wound 110 windings <coughs> but of course I know that when there is here approximately say uh, 3 volts or so, uh, the ratio between these two windings is not very high. That means that when a transistor here is switching that primary coil, the voltage can never get higher than uh, say uh, 6 volts here, 40 related to 110, that is say uh, 4 times. No, that's too much. Anyway, three times. So the voltage will here will never on the secondary winding get very high. When you want a real high voltage here, use more windings. And the thing is here that uh, I wanted to show that how that circuit works. It's a kind of very basic circuit that always works. So here the more definite ID. So that was all. Let's go to the workbench and see how it was made in real and how it works. And I wanted to name this video under the title The Unexpected um, Behavior of uh, Relaxation Oscillators. The reason is that there are many parameters that can make such a circuit work good or uh, that also can make that the circuit doesn't work, uh, work nice has everything to do uh, with the coil here on that ferrite rod due to the properties of the ferrite material 
the whole unit will oscillate on a high frequency and you can set that frequency with the help of two important things. Sorry for all the movements. Two important things. This is by the way the schematic. Two important things. They are here. The potentiometer of 50k, 50,000 ohms, and the value of the back coupling capacitor. Pen over somewhat first. I made it with two times a BD139. Their amplification factor is approximately 150. And I made it for a 9 volt battery because the question of one of my followers uh, was uh, that he wanted to use a 9 volt battery. And perhaps this is a, a schematic that is more easy to understand. That's this schematic. It's in fact completely the same schematic. I added here, by the way, a 10 microfarad capacitor. Don't solder it parallel to the battery because of the leakage of such a 10 microfarad capacitor. It can deplete the battery. I say here that you can use a bicycle lamp, but you can also use a 10 ohm resistor. I tried at first a 2.7 ohm resistor and you can surely see that it burned out. That has everything to do with the unexpected uh, behavior of such a, in a certain way, wild oscillator. It can oscillate very properly and neat, but it can also oscillate wild. And that's what I want to show in this video. I don't want to make it too long, by the way. So, let's switch it on. Connect the battery to the unit here and let's see what the oscilloscope can bring in terms of oscillations. Never connect your oscilloscope to the high voltage winding, so never here to the high voltage winding. And say, let's see what happens. This is the wild oscillation of this relaxation oscillator. The waveform is more or less unpredictable, but it works and it gives out a high voltage. And uh, because the ratio between the primary and the secondary is not uh, very high, I only read here on the scale uh, of 120 volts, 50 volts, 50 volts, that's what it is giving out. And also, because of that strange oscillation, when I touch the meter, so my meter is also connected to the uh, secondary winding, it forms a uh, inductive and capacitive load. So when I touch the meter, you can see the voltage go up. That's a part of the strange phenomena of this type of oscillator. Well, and now I'm going to turn the potentiometer here, 50k, and let's see on the scope what that effect is. Oscillation stops. Always a bad thing when the oscillation stops. A high current can flow that can damage the transistors. The reason is that the 10 ohm uh, resistor was soldered in, or a, a 6 volt bicycle lamp. In such a case, the bicycle lamp will start to light up. Turn the potentiometer back again, and here we have another waveform. And perhaps you have heard it that on a certain moment, the circuit starts to beep. Uh, I hope I can reproduce that. Yes, here. Perhaps you can hear it. Now that transformer, the high voltage transformer, starts to beep. 
and that means that the whole circuit is oscillating around 14 kilohertz, 14,000 hertz. But uh, like I have showed, when you turn that potentiometer, you don't hear that beep. That means that the whole oscillator oscillates on a higher frequency and even on a wild frrequency. And when you have studied the waveforms that I showed earlier, this is a complex waveform, different frequencies at the same time, by the way. But when we are really going wild, it's here. This is really wild. Turn the 50k potentiometer, this is moderate wild, etc. etc. Here it starts again to be a little bit wild. Different frequencies at the same time. That also means that such an oscillator can give out an enormous high frequency noise. Anyway, I hope it was a little bit interesting. Thanks for watching. Uh, in the original schematic you see here a neon tube uh, because the ratio of this demo circuit, uh, the ratio between the windings is not very uh, high. The neon tube doesn't want to work. In this case it needs approximately 1000 windings or so to make that neon tube light up. But I connected a light emitting diode and on a certain moment when I'm lucky, the light emitting diode will start to light up when the transformer gives out. So here you can see it, certain voltage. So on this moment, with this setting of the potentiometer, there is real energy straight out, out of the secondary. So with some oscillations, no energy is straight out. But on uh, other oscillations, waveforms and frequencies, energy is straight out. So I think here is the ideal point, though, very important, sometimes such an oscillator, this oscillator doesn't want to start. So now it wants to start when I touch here the positive to the circuit. But with another setting of that <coughs> potentiometer, it doesn't want to start. So that was all about the very peculiar behavior of this type of oscillator, relaxation oscillator, uh, often used in uh, <coughs> uh, photo cameras for the flash unit. It's often used there, but of course to make it stable, you must make this, <coughs> not in this demo way, but in a more stable way. With short wiring, etc, etc. Thanks for watching again. This was all.